Hello, my name is Sean Sperry, and in this video we're going to do a demo of Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.2 application support for DB2. Now, as you probably know if you've been using DB2 for a while, DB2 natively supports Spectrum Protect, but in version 10.1.2 we've introduced the ability to use Spectrum Protect Plus. Uh, with DB2 as an application. Just an overview of how things work with Spectrum Protect Plus. Uh, we're going to allow you to do backup, restore, and recovery of single partition DB2 databases. And the way we do this is with software snapshot based online backups using DB2. ACS. So we use the ACS interface of DB2 and the snapshotting capabilities of file systems, either our logical volume managers, either LVM2 or JFS2, to actually do the uh, backup. Now we have written a custom delta copying algorithm for data movement, which takes the backup from the snapshot and moves it to a Spectrum Protect Plus vSNAP repository, which is a storage pool for Spectrum Protect Plus. And effectively, this allows us to do incremental forever backups of DB2 databases. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of all of Spectrum Protect Plus, but if you're familiar with the product at all, Basically, this is the way we operate on all of the applications that are supported by Spectrum Protect Plus, including Oracle and SQL Server. Uh, now, we do allow the ability to optionally uh, do a continuous archive log backup to the vSNAP repository and also do log truncation. And again, this is very similar to... Uh, how Spectrum Protect Plus works with Oracle and uh, SQL Server. Now, the prerequisites for support for this. As I mentioned, we do require DB2 Enterprise Server Edition version 10.5 or 11.1 .1 with the fix packs applied. And the Operating systems we support are Linux x86 running uh, Red Hat or SUS, or AIX System P uh, running on a System P server, obviously. The file systems supported are going to be EXD2, 3, 4, and XFS on Linux, or JFS2 on AIX. Now, there are some additional requirements in terms of the configuration of DB2. First of all, the user who's going to perform the backup has to have sudo privileges without password in order to do discovery and to perform uh, the backups. The DB2 log files must reside on a dedicated logical volume or volume group. and Finally, the snapshot is going to be stored in free space on that volume group. So your volume groups holding the table space and log volumes must have sufficient free space to store uh, the snapshots. Now, this is just kind of an overview of the prerequisites, so I kind of hit the highlights for you here. As always, if you Google Spectrum Protect Plus All Requirements document, you will see the DB2 requirements, and you can click on it, and you can get a full detailed list of all the requirements. And for all of the databases, SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, and all of these applications, it's just a good idea to look at that before you try to implement it. Particularly, the databases can be pretty complicated in terms of the number of different ways that they're configured and the number of different operating systems that they support. So it's just good to make sure that what Spectrum Protect Plus uh, supports aligns with how your database is, uh, is implemented. 
Okay, so here's some information on the demo that I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to use Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.2 patch 1. And I am using IBM DB2 Advanced Enterprise Server version 11.1 .1, mod 4 fix pack 4. Now I've implemented on real version 7 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 7 with LVM2. And I happen to choose the latest and greatest XFS file system for the databases and the logs. Now I am going to show IBM Data Server Manager version 2.1 just to give us a GUI to make some changes to the database with, but that is of course not necessary for, uh, for the purposes of doing data protection or reuse with Spectrum Protect Plus. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before we actually get into the demo of Spectrum Protect Plus is I just want to show you on uh, the DB2 level and Linux system that we're running the DB2 instance on, how everything is configured. As you can see here, I'm logged in as the DB2 instance owner, which in my case is DB2 inst1. Uh, and if I do a DB2 level, you can see the version of DB2 that I am running. It's DB2 version 11.1.4.4. And just to show you how I have things mounted, I'll do a mount grep db. You'll see that I do have my database volumes uh, in a different volume group and mounted on a different file system than I do my log volumes. So I have my database mounted on db2 data db as an XFS file system and my log volumes mounted on db2 data slash ack log as a uh, XFS file system. Now just to continue with the with the configuration of db2 on this machine I'll do a db2 list database directory and you can see that I have one database on this machine, which is the sample database that comes with DB2. I'm going to do a DB2 connect to sample, just so I can connect. And I'll do a DB2 get DB config and grep for logs. Grep for log. And you will see that... Here is where my log files are stored, as I said, in this db2 data act log uh, directory. And you will also see that my database is configured to be recoverable, so I can run recovery. My first archive log method, logarch meth1, is set, and it happens to be set to a directory on the system. It could also be set to Spectrum Protect if that's what you wanted to do. So that's how this database is configured. Now let's take a look at the Spectrum Protect Plus side and actually do a backup and a restore. Okay, so here we are in Spectrum Protect Plus. And while we're in Spectrum Protect Plus, uh, I'm not going to revisit all of the aspects of Spectrum Protect Plus and how it's used from backup. I'm just going to basically cover the DB2 application. I would encourage you to go out there and Google. There are lots of videos out there on Spectrum Protect Plus that can give you the general overall functionality. But just looking at Manage Protection, and applications. Here we see DB2, Oracle, and SQL. You can see we have uh, DB2, and we're going to click on Backup. And the first thing we'll do is go ahead and manage application servers and add an application server. And the application server we're going to add is SPPDB2. And I am going to add the SPP user, which has sudo privileges, as the instance that I'm going to use. 
and now once I add that the first thing that's going to happen in Spectrum Protect Plus is if I go out here and look at jobs you'll see that a job is going to run that is going to go out there and do a inventory of the server and this is going to find all of the databases on that instances instance so we can go in and apply an SLA to them. Now while that's running it'll take a minute or two to run. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and I'll come back when it completes. Okay so that completed very quickly. It only took 35 seconds and now if I go back to DB2 backup I will see that I have my instance, the SPP DB2 instance, and I can click on it and see the databases that are there. And as you just saw from the instance when I did it from the command line, we only have one database on this instance. It's a sample. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and apply a SLA to it. In Spectrum Protect, the plus, the way you choose backups, retention, schedules, and where they go is by doing an SLA. So I'll click the database. I'll select SLA policy. I'll go ahead and pick the silver SLA just as an example. So it's going to run every day at 12 a.m. and keep three snapshots for it. So I'll do a save and now the SLA policy is applied. Now I'm just going to show you, uh, so this is going to do snapshot backups at the time the, the backup occurs. I'm just going to show you that Spectrum Protect also supports through options uh, continuous backup of the logs. So the archive logs can be written to the same vSnap repository in which case you'll get a recovery to a specific point in time or any point in time based on the logs. For my purposes I'm not going to choose that right now so I'm just going to be happy with the snapshot backup that I uh, take. So now the silver SLA is applied. We could wait until midnight for that to run. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just kick off a backup of that DB2 database. And you'll see that the database backup will go to running, or the SLA will go to running, and it's going to go ahead and back up the database. Now this will take a few minutes to run, so uh, again, remember, this is the first backup, so it's going to be a full, not an incremental, and uh, it's going to take a few minutes to run. So while that's happening, I'll go ahead and pause the video again and we'll come back when that is completed. Okay, so that backup completed, as you can see here, it took three minutes and 25 seconds. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to this IBM Data Server Manager tool just to have a GUI. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make some changes to the database so we can see uh, we can see the uh, the results of a restore. What I'll do is I'll maybe I'll go ahead and drop the ACT table and do a run. So the ACT table should be dropped if I do a refresh, and then I'll just go take a look at this employee table. And I'll go take a look at the data, and maybe I'll change a name or something. So I'm gonna take this first name of Christine, and I'm gonna change it to maybe Christina. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and run that command, that SQL statement. And then I'll go ahead and close that. And now if I just go look at employee and data, you'll see I have a Christina. So made some changes to the uh, to the database. I'll go ahead and close out of this. 
and then I'll just go back to my home screen here on my data server manager and now I'm ready to go back into Spectrum Protect Plus and do the restore so what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll do a restore and as you can see now I have all of these particular restore points I only have one instance and one database uh, so what I'll do is I'll go down there and click on that database and uh, I can see all of the restore points that are associated with the database by doing this I just have one I'm gonna go ahead and move that over to the restore list and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my options so what I'll be able to do now is restore to production restore it to the original instance uh, as with virtually all of these tools right you can run recovery from within the tool or you can run recovery from the DBA from the command line I'm gonna just make myself easy my life easy and I'm gonna go ahead and recover until the end of the snapshot backup so I'll let spectrum protect plus do uh, the recovery for me and since my database is already there I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite it I know that I want to overwrite it uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll just save my options and now I'll just kick off my restore job and I'm getting a prompt here that said uh, I'm gonna overwrite an existing database are you sure you want to run this yes I am and in a second I should see my job session come in once the uh, once the GUI refreshes so we'll just give that a second and there is my restore job it's been running for 27 seconds now again it'll take a few minutes to run so I'm just gonna go ahead and pause the video while that restore job uh, runs okay so my restore has completed it took about three minutes and 28 seconds so my database is back now I could go over to the uh, to the system and do a DB2 this database directory I'll just go over here and uh, go to the database so there's my database let's go ahead and look at the tables in that database and I'll do a refresh and notice that my ACT table is back so that's good news if I go a uh, employee and take a look at the data Christina has now gone back to Christine so this is indeed the old database before I did the backup now I just did a basic restore here you could of course restore to an alternate server restore to alternate names you can do a test restore in certain cases to test the data without actually moving it from the vSnap repository you can also do cloning for data reuse uh, so different things like that but I just wanted to show you the basics of doing a backup and a restore with Spectrum Protect Plus for DB2. So I hope you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you again in another video.